Who's okay. on your Mount Rushmore of stand-up comedians? So that's four. Okay. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I think Louis C.K. has got to be on there. He didn't make my cut, but he made one of the. Uh, he got removed. Louis, Louis C.K. Norm Macdonald. Trying to think back to the old O and A days, but then I'll be like, ah, oh, that like like Jim Norton stand up. I would never put him anywhere close to my Mount Rushmore, but he's Patrice hilarious. On his own. Yours. Patrice O'Neill, but he doesn't have enough of a catalog. Like his mm, one okay. really big special elephant in the room is hysterical. So honestly, yeah, Patrice should probably be on there because I like his special elephant in the room. We might have it's no up there overlap. with any other special. Norm McDonald, Carlin, uh, uh, Carlin, he got bumped off my list. Uh, Prior, Eddie Definitely Murphy, Carlin. and um, um, Carlin Pryor, Eddie Murphy. I'm probably I'm probably gonna say Chappelle just because those are the mm. ones that that the he got bumped had, off my list. Those are the Carlin ones was had, so bad late in his career, like it was just fast talking, no non jokes. But sucked. he had a late career. I don't know. I I, I enjoyed the wordplay that 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 he would do sometimes. Um, I liked Carlin. Why is she with? Car- I don't really love comedians who think they're the only smart person in the room like that particular style irritates and grates on me a little bit so when he just oh everyone's so stupid they don't see what i see like yeah get over yourself fuck nard but uh here's my list chris rock louis ck did i say i removed him eddie murphy and bill burr bill burr was so great in his early career it's just the last couple I've seen from him wasn't in the style that I enjoyed from his, his earlier career. Not many That's what Carlin have, did like, to me. I felt career. like, you know how when an athlete stays too long, sometimes their legacy is hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, it, even though it's their years and their like upper 30s, it still drags down your opinion of them entirely. Yeah. That to me is what Carlin did at the end of his career. Just too much of the same old everyone's dumb but me routine. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the like the last Carlin specials are just like eight minutes of him like rattling off a memorized memorized diatribe, and it's like, is a punchline coming? Like, is because you're just like listing dates you memorized and like feigning shock that other people didn't also memorize your opening monologue. Like, mm. you're, yeah, I, I I don't think Carlin's that great. I Man, okay. I can't think of a good fourth one. Louis C.K. Norm Macdonald. Fucking insulin, at least. He managed what? Control his fucking insulin. Okay. Well, if Patrice O'Neill wouldn't have gone into <laughs> diabetic coma and died, he'd still be hilarious. Oh, Actually, there's, he get, there's was no he crossing way. the street and got hit by diabetic coma? I hate when that happens. <laughs> he was. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> that is what happened. Did, yes, Kyle. Did the diabetic coma fault. fall off the top shelf because somebody stacked it poorly? <laughs> no, Patrice went out on, well, not on top because I think it was post- posthumous release of his special. Yeah, Patrice is on there for sure. Norm MacDonald. Louis C.K. Who, yeah, it's a lot, it's real game. easy to say Patrice had a great career when he didn't get to have the last, the end of his career, right? Yeah, he oh. didn't even get to have like the mid of his career because he died at yeah. like forty-two or something. If you kill Pryor or you kill uh, Carlin, you know, uh, two specials. Patrice then, O'Neill's then. one special is funnier than anything George Carlin ever did by oh, far. Oh, by far, not close. I need to see it because I, what I know of Patrice O'Neill <laughs> is just him being very good at debating, but not like making a point just mocking the other person yeah (laughs) and and i i saw him debating this person and i I forget the details but he was like where were you during this march and she's like i was in that march i was there i marched for this cause that you're accusing me of not supporting and what could have been a wild zinger right an absolute nailed patrice he's like oh i didn't know that well thank you that's right and then he moved on and just kept owning her and it like he really minimized the shot that she landed. I was like, oh, well done, right? Yeah, you know, like that, the that's... the old anyone out there listening who hasn't heard much of Patrice, listen to the old Opie and Anthony clips of Patrice O'Neill. It's hysterical. He's so funny. Him and Jim Norton and Anthony Cumio were such a great trio. Is no, he funny? Or is he just Williams good at child? tearing people down? No, he was he was funny in all sorts of ways. Like the, the, the vibe of O and A was like undermining and like taking like shots at each other all the time. On, so that's even his character on The Office, though he was a piece of shit. There's a video of it's an old O and A where Chris Rock, I believe it is, talks to Patrice on Opie and Anthony, and is like, "Patrice, what are you doing, man? You should be Chris Robinson right now." 
You should be on the office. You should have those lines. And Patrice is like, I know. And he's like, and Chris Rock's like, yeah, you're funnier than Chris Robinson. Like you would have been that guy if you could have got along with anyone on that set and not come in like you were like standoffish to people and you're six foot six. And so a standoffish six foot six guy is kind of intimidating. And so like he, even, Patrice even didn't figure character. out until way too late that he had to play the game. I enjoy Hollywood. when a Titan puts someone in their place. It, it happened on the Howard Stern show. I know I've talked about it before, but um, Jerry Seinfeld. Seinfeld came on the Howard Stern show and Stern was talking about how his TV show would probably beat the Seinfeld show if only it had the Seinfeld budget. And he's like, really? Really? Captain Underpants needs better lighting. Is that your problem? <laughs> Is that why your show's canceled? And it was, and, you know, Seinfeld's funny. He delivers it better. Fart yeah, man. Too. Or uh, it, Son of the it, Beach. Fart man was these, his MTV stupid. Arthur Eager, Son of the Beach was oh, his TV show. And uh, it was just like, fuck. Jerry's not the least bit intimidated by him. And everybody else is. No. Yeah, why would Jerry? Although Howard probably should have mentioned the, that that young ass like girlfriend Jerry had when he was 42. Jerry's like 42 with a 17-year-old girlfriend. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd have pivoted to that. I think they're <laughs> still together. Am I wrong? I'm not sure. I, I would be surprised. Like, I feel like the you're story right. would be Jerry Seinfeld with his wife when she was 17. <laughs> yeah, you're probably want to know right. who got groomed and stayed with him, though? The, the president of France. That Macron guy? Oh, yeah? Probably, it's probably supposed to pronounce it like a croissant. It's probably a Macron. But uh, <laughs> that guy was like, I think he married like his school teacher or his like private nanny or something like that. And she is the first lady of France to this day, like 30 years older than him. Yeah. Like there are pictures of her and him when he is a child child. And she's like this, a you teacher. know, good looking 30 yeah. year old woman. <laughs> that is fucking weird. Yeah. But uh, I, I had to like look up so I could jog my memory i think number four would go to mitch hedberg for Ooh. me that's a good yeah, I almost i'm almost Stephen torn Wright. between I, I was gonna say that i'm almost torn between mitch hedberg and Stephen wright but uh because they both have such similar styles i like Stephen wright's voice more it's more like you know baritone and that adds in his delivery but mitch hedberg was so clever and funny and was like it was endearing because like if you was read about style? mitch hedberg he's like he was so anxious every time he went on stage and like was hmm. was a like a nervous Nelly. Like that's why he would stand so still and like look down, almost like let his hair cover his eyes sometimes. But he was hysterical and he thought about things in a way most people didn't, which is what you need to be funny. And I of find that endearing in fighters. Uh, GSP, who you probably heard of, he's one of the greatest of all time, was terrified before every fight. Like I remember, I think it was Cerrone who was like fighting on the same night as him. He went back there to see GSP, maybe after Cerrone, but before GSP mm -hmm. went up there. Mm -hmm. And GSP is like, fuck, this guy is so scary. Like, why do I do this? Why do <laughs> I, why am I, why is this my job? And it, it turned out GSP really liked training, but he really disliked fighting. Yeah. Yeah. They, there was that documentary from a few years <laughs> back called like The Enforcers or Enforcer, where they talked to a bunch of former NHL like brawlers back when that was a bigger part of the game. And some of the interviewers would be like, oh, so by the, you know, by your eighth season of being a brawler, that was just part of the game, right? Like you just show up, no nerves. And they were like, no, like it was awful. I would like throw up before games sometimes because I would know, all right, we're playing the blues tonight. That means I might have to fight Chris Pronger and he's a tough motherfucker and he's going to at least land a handful on me and I'm going to be feeling like shit the next day. And I don't know how many more of these I can take to the head because I'm in my eighth season as an enforcer. So no, I was not calm. I was in a constant state of panic in my NHL career Dude, because the only way I had me. my job was if I did this because I couldn't skate like the other guys. I couldn't shoot like the other guys. I couldn't pass like them. I'm living my dream, but in this one way, where I have to do it, I have to play the game in a way I don't want to, to stay in the in the show. They would die. I, was, I was watching a thing about the Chevy Chase show. You may not know this, but Chevy Chase had a late night TV show for about five minutes that failed so spectacularly that it's an hmm. embarrassment. And he had a fish tank behind him. And they were, oh, they were like, yeah, the they were like apparently the fish always die. <laughs> they yeah. had to get new fish every night for the new episode. He had Dude. yellow tanks. Those fish fucking hate each other. It is difficult to have more than one of them, and he just overpacked them into the same tank. I remember it. The, Taylor, he the did first or like night. the movies, the set people. 
I'm sure it was the set people. Yeah, yeah I'm acting like he did. He had, a, but... he had a wacky set too. It was this big open stage that had like the band and everything sort of like Leno does. But then there was a clamshell sort of thing that like closed in on him and his desk and the couch for this more private sort of um, interview style thing. But the show was awful. Every I watched a thing about the show today. Like the the first episode, the pilot episode, he comes out with a basketball dribbling, and there's a goal, and he, you know, tosses one up, misses. Live studio audience, live cameras. So mm -hmm. he he he's, oh, he dribbles, he goes back in, he goes in for the layup, and then they have to cut to a close up of a layup mm -hmm. actually going in. And then back to him going, oh, 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 and then and then really awkwardly going through his monologue, like worse than we would do, frankly. Mm, like he's really? so bad at monologue, he like stops and like, ha, I'm uh, don't usually do this sort of thing. <laughs> like, there's a <laughs> really? moment where he's like off his game and he's just like not. It was so embarrassing. I don't. They spent five million dollars on that show. Three million of it was his salary. A million was re was like redoing the building that they were in. And it failed right away because Letterman just had become a thing. It's right after Carson mm -hmm. uh, retired. You know, they were Fox wanted to try to step into the late night game. You got his it three million dollars. Well. Did, who uh, did Arsenio Hall? Was that Fox? That sounds right, but I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. No idea. He was the king of the hill for a brief little bit. At least I remember it. And then they wanted everyone else's show to be like Arsenio Hall. So he had more of a party atmosphere. Things were more fun. And uh, everyone's like, that's where we need to be. That's the future of variety shows, whatever those things are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody has, kind of has their own take. I know Seth Meyers kind of does more of a sit at your fucking desk and do an SNL ripoff thing now. Mm. Um, and over time, like, I, I, I always watched Leno. We were a Leno household. I've never watched uh, any of those. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, like the, none of those late night shows. Never watched uh, them. Like, grow, I felt like they were always, you were either a Letterman guy or a Leno guy. And, and... I don't know. We always, we always, when I was a little kid, we watched Carson because I'm old enough. And, uh, I don't know. After that, I guess I didn't really get into the replacements. Um, it turned out they're all just pieces of shit. <laughs> like all of them were pieces Jay of Leno? shit in one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. I think he like blackballed a bunch of people, wouldn't let him on the show and was kind of a scummy guy about Who? it. Uh, I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember. Oh. I, oh, I think what it was was, um, Joan Rivers. Um, so Johnny. Johnny Carson banned Joan Rivers and Leno kept that tradition up for so she was banned for life, you know, because he did the show for so long. Joan huh. Rivers, very funny comedian. She also had a stay at a uh, late night show on Fox. She was their first I didn't like her. I don't know what she did like at her peak, but I remember her as the person who made fun of people's outfits on the red carpet. And yeah. I'm like, as a stick, just like being mean, it, it's not my cut. Like, I think less of that style of comedy mm, that's what she i was thought very she neat. was and then i this was probably 10 years ago now i watched one of her stand-up specials and i was like frankly i was like this is the funniest woman i've ever seen like yeah. like genuinely very very funny like a lot of female comedians stand up don't do it for me but she was good yeah hmm. i mean i i don't know what else she did other than amy schumer and yeah. sarah silverman would like to have a word with your rankings all, all right. right now uh, don't yeah. do that they're right up there with patrice o'neill I, I think sarah silverman <laughs> is kyle's all time right first of all i like sarah silverman not only mm -hmm. is she funny but she is sexy um amy schumer is not funny or sexy um but oh, I, I didn't appreciate you even like throwing them in together it made no sense <laughs> to me because sarah just... silverman big old titty hot jewish lady who's funny as shit Sarah Silverman. I don't think she has big old titties. They do she have has, something in common tales. She's done nude scenes. I was the nude pretty scenes. sure Taylor <laughs> wouldn't like either of them. <laughs> which is why I picked them. <laughs> no, nah, I like Sarah, Sarah Silverman. I hate Amy Schumer. I um, like Sarah although, Silverman. I don't know if I like her comedy. I'm, like I've seen her do short stand-ups, and it didn't do it for me. Mm -hmm. But I've also seen her say get interviewed on a like late night show, and that to me is her cup of tea. That she excels. I enjoy there. her personality very much. I haven't yeah. seen any very... of her shit really. <laughs> So yeah. Oh, there's your nudes. Nice. Let's see what we got oh, here. Find the... Oh, let's see. There, there, there's lots of nudity there. She gets what the out. fuck is the aspect ratio? I don't know. This. I don't know. It it looks like it looks like these are Zach's personal like creep shots. <laughs> 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 it looks like Zach has been on Sarah Silverman's case for longer than uh, than any of us, and he's got some shots yeah. here. That he just he... had to go right up to his bookmarks tab and <laughs> drag that down here. <laughs> you know what? I 
I'm looking at these nudes. I'm going to say she looks good, but amongst Hollywood women, she's below average. Wait, would you line up with that, Kyle? And I, I do know, not I see any hot. giant titties in there. I look pretty big to me. Uh, this is the aspect ratio. That's not fair. No, I think she's just a wide bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, she's, you know, Sarah Silverman, three and a half feet tall, four feet yeah. wide. You know, like a <laughs> linebacker. Really weird looking tits. Yeah. Oh, shit. She looks like a like a fullback. Jesus. Like a like a five nine. Are you looking at the one of her in the down. shower with the bush? Oh, I closed. Uh, it. I've I've seen it before. I, I've seen all of them before. <laughs> You've seen all of them, every single I have, one. I I yeah yeah sure. Who's the best female comedian? I know we we did the Mount Rushmore, and obviously there's no women on that. But like, <laughs> I don't know them by name, but I've heard funny female comedians. The thing is, I haven't heard funny female specials. Like the I can I, I will hear like a joke or two from uh, that I'll, I'll think oh that's good that's a good take or. Or that's a, a fun twist or a great way to look at that. Or you, or maybe they're just physical performance was really good. That I I I like physical comedy too. I like but I, I don't know them by name. I don't know their names. Sarah Silverman and Amy Schumer, Nikki Glazer, and I don't think I can name another female comedian. I think I'm tapped at three. Yeah, I and haven't I'm, heard yeah. any of them. I Every guess so often I'll get into a female comedian. Nikki Glazer was one. There's another one, her name might be Tommy. She's blonde, kind of cutish. And, uh, um, but then like, once I get into like 15 minutes of their stuff, I'm like, ah, actually that was too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes it's, it's not even that I don't think they're funny. It's just that their comedy isn't for me that it, I think that's for ladies I, or mm. maybe it's for like gay dudes and like butch chicks. Like, like they've got a different audience that that's not necessarily me. It's not just funny for the sake of funny. And, and that's fine too. You, it's not necessarily sticky either. I don't think to have a demographic that you're targeting towards the blue collar comedy guys. I would rather listen to Ron White tell a story than just about anybody. Like mm -hmm. I remember that, that tater salad story. I like, like Jesus Christ. That was funny. The first 10 times I heard it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, like, like, I love that story. That's all t-shirts. It's such a good punchline. Yeah. And but then you had Billingville up there just dragging the whole gang down. I'm not a big Billingval fan at all. I like Jeff. I like uh I, I did like um fucking Larry Tater. was funny. Yeah. Uh I was on the female comedian, I had a thought. Hutch came on this show last week and he talked about audience capture. So what happens is like you go on your show, you're just you, you spout a talking point. It doesn't matter right wing, left wing, or whatever, and your audience responds to it. And then it's like, ooh, these guys like it when I shit on Obama or Trump pictures. And then it makes you do it again next week and then next week and then the next week. And now sudden more and more of your audience is like from that fringe and mm -hmm. you just keep going in that direction. And then you become that guy that they want you to be who shits on the people they hate. Mm -hmm. That's audience capture. I think that happens with female comedians and their dating life. They tell some joke about how they you know, the guys don't like them or the guys fuck them or whatever. And then now, damn it, 80% of their comedy is about dudes. And it happens I, a ton. Well, you know, there's the old thing, like like find some dialogue in a in a in any piece of piece of literature or film where it's two women speaking together in a room alone about anything that's not a man. Mm. You'll really be hard pressed, my friend, when you start like <laughs> using those guidelines to find two women in any piece of literature <laughs> or movie or film, TV show, even a short fucking story, bedtime story shit. Where two women are in a room alone talking about not a man, you know, um, for whatever reason that is. I think that Amy Schumer's success is what I want to blame all the pussy humor on. I, mm. I, I hate pussy humor. I hate the cock humor. I don't like fart humor either. I, I like uh, I like something a little bit wittier than that, I guess, above fart humor and pussy humor. Yeah. And the first I remember Amy Schumer did have a funny story about her pussy. But then eventually it was like all of her stories were about her pussy. She was talking about getting her pussy waxed and mm. how it's this sort of first world thing where like here I am having a servant wax my pussy. And then this little old Asian lady has to present a mirror to a mirrored reflection of said pussy to me. And like, eh? Eh? and I have to give her my approval. Like, yeah, it looks red and angry. Nice. nice. <laughs> and it's like, that's a good story. I like that. That had me cracking up. I remember specifically where I was when I heard that joke. I was on vacation in Savannah and I thought that was good. And I thought she was good. And then right after that, I watched her movie, which had John Cena in it. 
and a few other people. I, I think it's just about her getting fucked a lot. But John uh-huh. Cena plays one of her dates, and he's he steals the whole show. He's mm. so good in that. Of course, he's like looks like John Cena, but he does. He that. just played a really good character. That was the first time I like realized John Cena could act outside of I don't know. He does movies called The Marine. I think it's his first movie. <laughs> and then there was like Marine 3, 4, 5, 6, where he's just like army man, shoot to kill. He does movies in China a lot, right? Like, isn't he, he really popular speaks, in China? Is that right? He speaks the language. I know that. I think it's the WWE stuff that maybe it, like he, I think he's popular from WWE in China and maybe he does commercials and has, um, you know, opportunities there because of that. Hmm. Zach said the WWE pays their... I'll call them fighters to learn other languages. That's interesting. Mm. He learned oh, it to make w- more money. How much money does John Cena need? It seems like he's got a lot of it. He's got. I don't think he had that much when he was learning that. I don't know. If he's got a lot of it. You know, what? his hasn't he been the biggest professional wrestler for like over a decade? I don't. I don't know the world, what, but I've I don't know. What he's they, the only one I've heard of. I don't know what they get paid. First of all, um, but I do. I will say this: his show got picked up for a second season. Finally, that season Peace that maker? thing happened four years ago, and they're, they're like, "All right, this summer we're gonna start." filming the next are we talking about peacemaker yeah oh damn i like that that too four years it was really good i thought it was excellent had a really fun sense of humor um and john cena can carry a goddamn show he's good